Now we are live. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to that One Piece talk. With me today, I do have Chestnut Tanuki. <sighs> yes, everybody, I have Chestnut Tanuki, and I have Fiso, the editor from TCB Scans. We are going to be reacting to One Piece chapter 1085. This chapter has been making rounds. Everybody's been told to like make sure you read it, make sure you don't get spoiled, yada yada yada. So it looks like it's going to be a banger chapter, and the only person that actually knows that between the three of us is Fiso. But before we start, uh, I would like to give the floor to Chestnut. If you've never seen us before, uh, Chestnut, tell people who you are and what you do and what you have coming up. Um. Um. I'm the Chestnut Tanuki. I like to make content about things that I like, and I love One Piece. So if you want to go check out my TikTok, I make a ton of uh, videos on there. I also do post to YouTube, so all of my really good content is on YouTube. So if you guys want to stay there and give me some support, I appreciate it. Uh, I do make videos as well. Like last week, I think I actually made a, a theory video. Uh, it was the the uh, Lily Maybe Emu or, or Li Lily maybe Joy Boy and not Emu. That that's the video I made. Sorry, I made a lot of them, but yeah. So go check it out if you like it. Yes, it. thank you so much, Chestnut. And we got Fiso. Fiso, tell us who you are and what you do and how much you like One Piece if you want to. But speak, bro. Um, hey. Um, I might not be a TikTok star like your other guest. Um, I do have a YouTube, but no one subscribed to it. <laughs> Mega Pisa. Um, haven't made a video in six years, so subscribe for nothing. Um, but I am editor of um, TCB Scans, and yeah, I'm basically here as a sage consultant. And hopefully, I don't ruin this amazing dynamic the hosts normally have. Oh, you're gonna add to it, bro. Yeah, it's this. This will be fun. Group hug. Group hug. Group hug. Group hug. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you both for being here. Um, uh, it really means a lot to have you both on here, especially you, Fiso. I know you've been trying to come on for a little bit. Uh, and so great to have you here. I want to shout out to everybody that's currently in the chat. So many people, as usual, you guys are so amazing. Always showing our uh, the support love. I mean, the support love. Showing the channel support and showing us love in particular. If you want any of Chestnut's links, they are in the description of the video below. Uh, shout out to Diamond Life, Party Pete, we haven't seen in forever, bro. Where are you? Javerse, also somebody. JC Explosions, Damn, The Lonely Mage, Crow, George, Ronnie Williams, Fidel, Zuko, Bane. We got Chestnut Tanuki, she's in the chat. <laughs> Mike Quinn, Trinlin, Mary Senpai, Scuba Steve, Afro Corey. Antoine, Mike Quinn, I said already, Alexis Flores, The Lonely Mage, Don French, Nick Quavo, and Shane D. Ta Dachi. All these guys, thank you so much for being here. Stacy Hayes, hello, hello. Everybody, thank you for being here. If I didn't read your name out loud, just know that uh, you are in my heart, okay? My, my, my cold ice heart. Uh, Celestial Donkey, with a super chat for five, he says, hashtag buggy gang. CD, always showing love, always the same hashtag. Nothing ever changes, so consistent. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, we are on the last day of our YouTube membership goal. We had 350 as the set goal, and we currently are at 474, uh, but it didn't update at the bottom left. So I want to specifically say thank you for showing all the love by gifting memberships uh, to everybody that has a membership. Uh, I hope you are enjoying the emojis. But other than that, uh, are you two ready to jump into this chapter? I've never been more ready to read this. <laughs> uh, she's been bouncing up and down. <laughs> uh, Ryunosuke with the two says, I want this TCB man to pick some panels apart, please. I shall try. <laughs> All right. High uh, expectations, Fizo. High expectations. High expectations are ready. Look at the pressure. Oh, my narration doesn't annoy people as well. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Fidel with the two uh, from Super Chat says, fasten your seatbelts. Hashtag lore peace. Yes. Mm. Lore peace. <laughs> Sounds like a lot. All right. So uh, for anybody that has not seen our channel before, at the top right where Chestnut's logo is and the TOPT logo, you're going to see tcbscans.com is where we're reading the one piece chapter 
and I'm going to turn it to a different color so our channel doesn't get uh, demonetized or canceled. So you will be able to follow the chapter with us as I slide down. And we got another five uh, from Terrence Matthews. He says, Chestnut, I think the special class of Logia will be Cosmic Logia, not Mythical. Uh, did you want to respond really quickly? I do. I'm so glad that people are doing this. Listen, you don't know how much... So many people were disagreeing with me that uh, Logias could have another subsection uh, because I said, oh, there could be mythical Logias, right? Now, cosmic Logias, number one, I think sounds cooler than a mythical Logia. Uh, number two, I love space. If you guys don't know, my dream was to become an astronaut at some point. Uh, <laughs> that didn't work out, but I do love space. Uh, but also, I feel like cosmic powers would be like, basically like like how there would be like uh, like light could be than like star power and it be and it would be somehow different uh or like lava could be like earth's core or something i love it i love it that's so cool all right oh. uh thank you terrence um celestial donkey with the 10 gifted subs thank you so much to everybody can you please throw w's in the chat for celestial donkey for his generous uh you know memberships that he just gave a couple of you to so thank you so much I appreciate you, CD. But for now, I think we're going to go... Oh, my God. We got another super chat from the Lonely Mage with five. He says, Mount Everest-sized goosebumps this chapter. Yo, guys, we got to get to this chapter. We got to... All right, yeah. so listen. Also, we're going to be reading the chapter. So if you guys super chat, we'll do it organically and try to read your super chat, okay? I don't want to, like, interrupt Fizo from reading. And I don't want to interrupt Chestnut going off with theories and stuff like that. So just just be patient with us that's all i ask but for now it's ladies first do you want to start off with uh your first page i would love to considering when i pulled up this page i was like oh i'm so <laughs> glad first the chapter title chapter 1085 the death of nefertari cobra i did not think that oda was going to go back to that i've I, for the past three chapters i thought that oda would just move away mm -hmm. uh but he's been consistent and I don't even think this is Oda anymore at this point. Uh, I don't think <laughs> Oda has ever done something where he's actually shown us what happens without going away for about three, like 20 or 30 chapters. So good on him. Uh, in the cover page, uh, we see one of the most adorable things uh, that I've ever seen. Frankie with this little departure sign encouraging hatchling turtles on their way to the sea. Uh, I, feel like, I feel like this might have some other meeting especially to like people going off into the sea and like starting off their new adventure mm. he's like uh, a parent watching them like flow could fly from the nest he is this is adorable i love it wait um he actually beats up the crab so yeah i was gonna say there's a crab there, there. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't uh like certain i think isn't it also like seagulls or something like hurt baby turtles there's something like that or like like there are a lot of natural enemies for turtles uh yeah. frankie is an ally though turtle mm. ally frankie yeah, he's a hold on so do you guys remember if frankie always wore the gold chain because i feel like he's um, had the yeah. gold chain off for a while um i i don't know if he's worn it in recent arcs because it doesn't really fit too much with the samurai aesthetic that one was going for um but he's he definitely had it at his introduction i don't think he wore it during dress rosa though yeah i love the chain bro i really do um yeah, I don't have much for this cover chapter. Usually, I feel like when Oda picks a certain subject, he usually does it with intention, but I can't find anything right now except maybe Frankie will soon lead a certain science group for the future. Mm -hmm. So, like, like, put it this way. If Vegapunk gets taken out and then Frankie takes over, like, Mads in a way, after he's done with the straw hats and finding the the that, uh, the one piece could be. he sets out like the new doctors or new professors that cool. could be like 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 Frankie somehow figures out how to take like uh punk records and and download the information so that in ca like in case the vega punks die like he can carry it on mm -hmm. and guide it i could i can see that i can For see the it future? you mess with a fizo no I was just quickly looking up all of Frankie's designs from Time Skip. He doesn't wear the chain in Fishman Island, Punk Hazard, Dressrosa, or Wana in what his about main costumes. Not even Sabaody Archipelago? Um, 
Return Sabuti, I don't think he does either, but I'll double check. Yeah, I was gonna say Frankie's not that guy, bro. He was like my favorite straw hat pre time skip, by the way. Yeah, his design yeah. changed so much. I think it's yeah, yeah. he was so cool, bro. When he used to throw his sideburns, I'm telling you, bro, that made me laugh out loud for sure. Like, well, I have an interesting tidbit about Frankie. Um, actually, I was thinking about making a video about this, but um, you know how his arms are like these like rounded things, like his forearms. Uh huh. Um, that's actually based on Popeye the Sailor Man, and so is the fact that um, he drinks Coke to get strong, and Popeye um, eats spinach to get strong. I'm not sure. Pop Popeye is a very old character. I don't know if you know. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, yeah. But... Larry would. No. Oh, oh. <laughs> I know what Popeye is too. <laughs> um, but um, what's really cool is um, Popeye. Um, he's actually based on a real person called Frank, a real sailor. And the guy's name is Frank. So I assume Oda looked up, um, you know, Ace Ventura mixed with Popeye the Sailor Man, used Coke instead. And, oh, what's the um, inspiration for um, um, Popeye? Oh, Frank. Frankie. There you go. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, clever, clever. All right. I guess we're done with this one. Let's go to the next one. Also, guys, All I right. can't take the logo away. Uh, uh, just can't. Demonetization is real, bro. All right, so let's so let's start. Uh, the chapter starts off the impossible ruler. No one is ever pant allowed to sit there. Pant. No individual should have the power to control the world. And then you just see like Cobra is shook. The man is shocked, and you just see all of the Gorsei kind of just standing there. Uh, and then it says, "Is that like Muse?" Is that how I'm supposed to pronounce that? Mu. Is it, is it, is it e Mu? Okay. Emu e e is referring to himself in third person with Mu. I'll explain the translation okay. before you mm. move on. Um, so basically, um, he's using Mu. Everyone else refers to him as Emu. Um, th this is just like, from what we can gather, he's just using his name and talking about himself in third person or, or a variant of his name. Um, Mu typically means like, non-existence or nothingness or emptiness or void um i don't know if you've ever read death note but um, one yeah. of the rules of the death note is if you die you, you go to mu or you go into nothingness um you cease to exist i, I think so anyway maybe i'm misremembering mm. so it, it, it's just very like you know it, emptiness but mu is also the onyomi reading for um dreams um, so Japanese is complicated, but the kanji for dreams, yume, yume um, is, um, it, it's got a kunyomi reading, typical Japanese reading, um, mm. traditional, uh, and you've got the um, onyomi reading, which is the Chinese reading, which is less frequently used. Um, so maybe you can very much reach and say his name means dreams, but it probably means like void or nothingness, you know. Or both, mm. like the, like a void of dreams, like it's supposed to have like that double entendre meaning. Or a dream of void. Could be. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> very, very much so. It definitely is probably related to the void century, and and that's why they call it. It didn't Paravision make a, a theory where it says it's void century. <laughs> I feel like he. I feel like he made a theory. I feel like that's his white sky theory where it was void century. Ah. Uh... No, but that's it's really not good written info. the same way as void century. It is written differently. I will say. It, it is okay. Yeah, that's very interesting. I, but sorry like, to interrupt. No, now we're now we're good. This 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 is how it should be a discussion. Uh, shall address two points being discussed. Ooh, and thou must answer a single question in return, Cobra. Ooh, it's like it's like so like definitely an a really old person because there's old English, right? Like is that is that why like it's like um yeah so um Emu kind of speaks like a like archaic old timey king not quite but like pretty formally so and you know verbose with obviously speaking about himself in third person so you can take that as you will all right awesome and then we see cobra uh, yeah cobra's just kind of like dying here oh, oh, who are you and then we go down to the next and we just see Co Cobra kind of looks like he's close to death. I'm wondering if, if you're probably right, Larry, that like Cobra was like about to like 
go and just wanted to remember we were talking about like Cobra wanted to just like he he was about to die and so he wanted to kind of know what was happening before yeah. he died. Yeah, I mean but, we we seen that with Whitebeard, right? Like he mm -hmm. wasn't gonna survive Marine Ford no matter what. He was already it's hooked a, up to life support, so he went in with the intention to pass away. Yeah, it's a very typical anime um trope where like someone's got anime sickness where they're going to die anyway, so they do a big sacrifice or something. Yeah. Um. So it's very common. Yeah. No, I, I love it. I've heard the name Emu before. It could be a coincidence, but one of the first 20 was also called that. What? Such curiosity titters on impertinence. Teeters. It will teeters? Yes, misspelled. Right. <laughs> uh, that is okay. It, it will be fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Look at OP it TCB's messing up already. No, <laughs> I'm joking. No. I'm joking. <laughs> I actually think it might be fixed if you F5 now, but I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's fine. <laughs> it, it will not be dignified with an answer. And then, and then we kind of go, this is a really nice perspective shot from Oda. Where it's like yeah. you see an, an, an emo kind of uh, emo. <laughs> Emu kind of like blends in. See, I'm, I'm making mistakes now. Uh, blends into like the, the chair. That's kind of raw. Uh, however, these initial queries shall be addressed. D is the moniker of our ancient enemy. In recent times, it has cropped up more frequently, however, but it is nothing but a faint echo. Those who carry the name do not even know of its true meaning now. And yet, this irritation only endures due to Queen Lily's grave blunder 800 years ago. Blunder? The same can be said of those uh, irksome scholars investigating the so-called void century. Bro. <laughs> Alright. That's three, but and like, then we'll go to Fiso. It's, but, yeah, it's it's three. Alright, so how has Cobra never addressed this? Like ever. Like how did he just hear this name before, but he didn't ask that as like a first question? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I guess I'm kind of confused on the fact that, like, he has so much information. Was this Emu, the name Emu, in the 800-year-old letter that Lily gave to the, the kings that, you know, came after her? Um, I actually think that the names of the first 20 might be common knowledge, going off of last chapter, where he said that um, Lily's name went down in history as one of the first 20, but history doesn't remember her afterwards so i think maybe like the first 20 are well known mm -hmm. except for you know in all of their original kingdoms the fact that they ruled their original kingdoms was has been wiped but they said that the names were wiped from those kingdoms last the fact that those dynasties ruled were wiped but i think it could be common knowledge that oh the don quixote no, it, it probably isn't actually considering how law reacts reacted to the name Don Quixote like that Don Quixote um Do Flamingo was a former celestial dragon. So actually maybe the commoners don't know the names of the first twenty. That's a good I point. would I would assume it's probably in the letter then if, if they don't know. You know what I mean? Like I would assume mm. that this this must have been what, what Lily wrote in, in her letter. Um also a very interesting thing, uh, Queen Lily's grave blunder 800 years ago. Now, I'm not saying that I just did a video saying that Lily could be Joy Boy. Uh, link, link in the description. Go check it out, guys. Give me some love. Saying is I may have been a little bit more on the mark than than everybody else. Just just <laughs> saying, just putting it out there. Everybody, please go support my video. Thank we you. haven't even gotten to any <laughs> part of the chapter that could actually tell us that. <laughs> Link in bio, guys. Link in bio. Well, I will say this. The fact that he, like, this person is referring to themselves in the third-person point of view, it does make this interesting, because I did kind of bring up a weird theory that this person's probably changing bodies throughout time, sort of like an Ochi, like a Rochimaru vibe. Mm. So I, that may still be possible. The thing is, too, I don't know if it means that this person is really old the way they're talking, because most royalty speak in a very, you know, formal way such as this. It's just that we don't go to the royalty palaces that speak like this, right? Like, we don't hear from people like Steli who 
talks like this like it's usually like the lower co- lower folk of royalty that speak normally but i think yeah. when we get to like the higher parts of the world they're going to speak more formally i feel like oda sometimes writes a lot of the nobles and royalties as spoiled brats as yeah spoiled children. That's true. Um, like a lot of the um, world nobles actually sound a little stupid, to be honest. Like they they use stuff like you know, like like they they use grand insults, but they actually you know, the, like if you hear the anime, they they like kind of slur their words a bit and stuff. Mm-hmm. That is that is true. They they kind of have like that uh, southern cadence. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting though. Like even when he says like such curi- uh, curiosity titters on impertinence. It will not be dignified with an answer. He's like, yo, I'm gonna, I'll tell you, but like, I'm still probably not gonna tell you everything. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yo, I don't have to do this if I don't want to. He's kind of arrogant. Yeah, like he he says that um, Mu shall address two of the points, but don't push it. Don't don't pry. Don't don't move any further. This is as much as you're gonna get. You're gonna, uh, I'm gonna answer the two points which you've brought up um to a degree and then you're gonna answer something of mine what do you think the all right you probably know fiso but chestnut what do you think emu is gonna ask cobra i have no idea like what, Some, like something about vivi it has to be something about vivi like like did she, I, I i would i would assume from this chapter remember when he made that thing that vivi could have conquered hockey because of like the rain and stuff yeah. I would assume it'd be something like, has she awakened this power yet? Because that was the only poster that she was holding. So I would assume that's why Vivi had to leave or something. Because, like, Cobra may have sent out, like, a dying message. Mm-hmm. Maybe? Or 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 maybe, she, or maybe she felt it because she has observation now? Ooh. I don't know. Don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm just interested. Um... I, would say, I would say Vivi, though. I'd say Vivi for sure. Like, oh, it has, it has to be. It makes me want to study, like, that? everything that emu saying to like however those initial queries shall be and addressed d is the moniker of our ancient enemy in recent times it has cropped up more frequently however it is nothing but a faint echo those who carry the name do not even know of its true meaning now that's very interesting because so when we heard from vegapunk vegapunk was like yo based on the beliefs and desires of people it ends up creating devil fruits and such like that right Mm. so the belief a mass belief can create something very powerful but if there's little belief which is why the government tries to suppress most of this information so it doesn't turn back up will become destructive towards their ruling right so it makes me think if there's so little amount of belief or knowledge about the d clan then how would they ever come to the how would they ever come to cause storms to the world itself unless there was like a strong belief behind them you know like i always felt like that's what oda tried to say with the devil fruits is like Mm. belief creates something maybe it's um their actions are still really consequential but the reasons why they're a issue has you know been lost Mm. um i do want to say that the japanese uses um they are shells or husks of um what came before oh um, that makes sense um i I felt echo um kind of conveyed the points a bit better um but yeah so so they're kind of like remnants or like none of them around now know what the meaning of d is but what's really interesting here is that emu seems to be blaming the fact that there are still irritants these d's running around on lily's blunder you know what's crazy too I know I'm still talking about this, but like maybe that's the fact as to why Luffy will bring the dawn. It's because he goes to each and every other island and they start to believe in him as a person in order to change the world. So the more belief he obtains, the more his goal is going to be realized eventually. Like if he has a big enough belief system behind him, he'll change the world. And that it, it's very interesting to point out that Blackbeard will be the exact opposite, right? But I wonder what kind of belief system he'll generate in order to combat Luffy at the end of the show. That's going to be I, interesting because that's going to be very, I would say, philosophical, but also morally challenging. And I think that's the best way to have One Piece kind of go towards the ending of the show. It's like, 
who do you believe in more this guy that represents darkness or the guy that represents light i don't know i feel like that would go mad hard though my bad one of the coolest things about blackbeard recently has been um by the way i loved writing the blackbeard um kuzon stuff where you cut to a bar and they're like anyway that idiot um sakazuki that, that was so much fun um but um what i was going to say is it's really cool how blackbeard is he refers to his um crewmates as his buddies mm. um I didn't actually think that he would see them as anything more than a means to an end. Like maybe it's a front, but it's very interesting that would... he, like Luffy, considers his allies his friends. That would be interesting, right, Chestnut? Because you've always spoken mm -hmm. that Blackbeard has this crazy importance. What if it's a different importance, right? Like what if it's like we see Blackbeard and Oda pretended for us to think this way about him for so long, and it turns out like nah, like. He's actually somebody you're probably going to root for at the end of the day. Like, that would I be feel, crazy. That would be I, so challenging I feel like, as a reader. I feel like he is. So, so I actually think you're right. Uh, and, and I think that there are so many parallels between Luffy and Blackbeard that when we finally see more into Blackbeard, we're going to see a lot of Luffy. And, and I, we kind of saw that in that bar scene where he was, like, joking around and, and, and doing, and, you know, like, having a drink with his enemy. And it's something that I feel like Luffy has kind of only been really shown to do. Mm -hmm. Uh and it's and it's really interesting like hey do you no, i don't want you i want you to join my crew how many times have luffy said that and people are like what are you talking about that's not gonna happen uh and so i th i think you're actually right i think blackbeard at the end he might actually become somebody that even though opposes luffy you're gonna be like no he's kind of he's kind of cool i can vibe with him you know what i mean like he he's evil but he's evil in a way that you're like man i just want to see this guy succeed uh, I think he hasn't been shown in that light too much yet, but with the mm -hmm. recent chapters, like I feel like we're gonna see we're gonna see something where everybody's gonna be like, "Wow, Blackbeard did something like really good, actually." And we're gonna be like, "What?" All right, so I have another thought to you for you too, and it's just this whole belief system that we're continuing on, right? Like, I'm so sorry that I'm like ranting about this, but it's very interesting because now I'm starting to see uh, certain questions. So, like, do you guys think the fact that since people do not know about emu and know about uh and they don't like a huge mass of people don't believe in this person or they don't even know this person exists is the reason why his power is weakening over time to people that are now rising up against the world government because like he sat in the dark the world his grip on the world is weakening yeah, because there's no belief, like they don't know he exists. So he's actually ruining himself, like he's destroying himself to a degree. That's actually really like profound if you think about it, because like we're talking about the dawn. So what's the opposite? Like what well, what does the dawn counter? The night. And like he operates in darkness, in shadow, and Luffy operates in the light. I, I think you're actually really onto something there. That makes a lot of mm -hmm. sense. I can see it going two ways. I can either see that being a way or the fact that the reason that the world government is trying to kill off dreams is because he he's a void of nothing. You know what I mean? Like a void of dreams. Kind of like we were saying, like there cannot be any dreams and he gets power, but because there's so many people with these lofty dreams and ambitions coming up, that could also be why he's losing power. Uh, though to the, to, to the effect of, of your point, it's kind of interesting. So there's this anime called inspector and there's actually like a, a, a ghost or something that basically was created on the internet and then became real. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the way that they defeated it was having, like, a Discord mod, like, go to the website, and, like, that's how they defeated this, like, really powerful ghost that was created online. But it was pre created through, like, people's dreams. I kind of could see Emu being something similar to that. Uh, just because I I've, seen it, I've seen it in a lot of anime where it's, like, uh, what are they called? Like, Monsters of the Imagination or something like that. Um, I could see Emu being, like, a monster of the imagination. I feel like that'd be really cool. But also, like, Emu would have to have, like, I don't know, like, like not be a person. Uh, so we'd have to see them, I guess, or maybe yeah. not. Maybe yeah. I, I always thought that Emo was wearing like black clothes. Like I just, I just, I didn't think that anybody, you know, I thought it was like, like the like robes and stuff. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Do you we'll think see. like people see Emu as a shadowed figure, or do you think that it's just for the audience's benefit? You know, I had this argument with a couple people because I, because they were like everybody in One Piece is like has like the, those shadows, and I was looking, and it's like. Pre-time skip, not so much. Pre-time skip, it, you see more detail. Post-time skip, you don't. 
Mm. Uh, and it's more covered in shadow. But to the effect of this chapter, like when you look at Emu up on that chair and there's no light, like shining, I, like and it's just like that faint outline. I would say that these are clothes. Yeah. Like I, I would say. Yeah. I, like I, I would say I it's agree like with my clothes. You. I, I don't think that this is like. Um... Odin, for example, because mm -hmm. like obviously in universe, Odin isn't like shadowed. Like you don't have a scene where like we, the first time we get a flashback with Roger, he's still shadowed, and it's like, "Hey, Odin, why are you all dark like that?" No, they're like they, they see him normally. <laughs> um, so yeah, I I I wonder if um, we're meant to take it literally, or if um, Cobra is actually seeing what Emu looks like. Yeah, I think I think there, he's definitely seeing what he looks like. It's just silhouetted for us, but um, yeah, yeah. Let's let's keep going. Fizo, you want to start with the next one? Yes. Okie dokie. Um, I, I can I read the end of the last one because the speech actually flows into it. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do it how you okay. see it. Hopefully, my emu isn't too cringe. Um, <laughs> this irritation only endures due to Queen Lily's grave blunder eight hundred years ago. Blunder? The same can be said of those irksome scholars investigating the so-called void century. Without that blunder, there would be no pirates chasing the poneglyphs in, in pursuit of treasure either. If it were not for Lily's incompetence, those vexing relics would never have been scattered all over the world. <laughs> I don't know how to do the um, exclamation point. Um, the release of the poneglyphs was the worst possible outcome for us, so one must wonder whether it was truly a mistake or if it was actually part of some larger plan. And they're all drawing guns. Oh, sh... Yo, they got the flicky! <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, Fiso, before you go on... Yes? This means something wild. I don't know why I just thought of it, but, like... Zunisha's punishment. We've never known what Zunisha's punishment was. We just know that mm. Joy Boy or somebody that could control Joy Boy told it to walk nonstop, and they he was Joy Boy's companion, right? Mm. What if the Vivi, well, Lily, eight hundred years ago, was friends with somebody that was like Momonosuke, who could have the voice of all things, also cool with Joy Boy? They knew that they were gonna lose. They knew that the world was going to go into dusk, so they left messages behind. And then Zunisha was the one to send all these poneglyphs across the world. Like, give every single poneglyph oh, exactly across the world. That's really sick. So, like, maybe Zunisha delivered them. Because how else would you move these incredibly immovable things that are just impossible to break as well? I'm wondering how Zunisha got around the red lines and the calm belt. That's the true too. Fruit? Like, I think it could deliver to the north blue and the east so, blue, but I'm not sure if it could get to the mm. west blue and the south blue. It like, and... I, I think it depends what devil fruit is on with them. Because, like, if you take something like the float float fruit, like, like, could put also more significance to Shiki, which I always like. But that. <laughs> like that would be able to move stuff too, wouldn't it? I know how. Oh, go, go, spit, spit. All right, what's 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 that, Wano? A giant pluton. Oh, pluton. Oh, oh, pluton. pluton. Yeah. So, who made the pony list? Um, the people from Wano, the Kozuki. Yes. So they probably used pluton, and it wasn't an actual ancient weapon. It was just an actual ship that they axed the shipwrights from Water 7 to make for them because they couldn't make it themselves. Then they put the Poneglyphs on this huge ship and then probably used some something to put all these messages around the world because Wano has never been affiliated with the government. Not Isn't once. It wild that, like, okay, Pluton was designed in Water 7, stored in Wano, and the map to it was kept in Arabasta. <laughs> it's, yes. it's so they were like all they, three are. exactly. And the reason why Lily decided against the Celestial Dragon system is because she knew that they would lose. But the only way to protect her people would be to follow with the plan, and she did so. And then she probably got interested, like Cobra has, about everything, and 
they probably took her out and then they just left them to like be as they are because they were like yo they're gonna stay there anyway and that's why yeah. i worry about them but or she left the post yo, like, did like i she... just bring out the voice century oh my Bro. god let's go <laughs> larry, you, larry you, your face lit up when you had that <laughs> eureka moment it was amazing <laughs> Oh my god! All right, my bad, my bad, piece. Yeah, you can continue. Continue. I was gonna say, I think, I think it's really interesting that they say that that Lily made a mistake. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's a blunder yeah. that the poneglyphs were let out. Like, and then it's like, but was it? it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but or was it actually part of some larger plan? Yeah, he, I, it seems it's... like he's suspicious that Lily didn't make a mistake. That the release of oh. the poneglyphs wasn't a mistake. That it was part of a larger plan. Yo, um, was, well, going back to Zunesha for a second, um, mm-hmm. I just want to say my, my theory has always been, um, well, I love the threads you guys were going on just there. Mm-hmm. My theory was always that Zunesha, um, was sent to destroy um the Mink's original homeland, and that's why his punishment was to become their new one and protect them throughout the um entire history until the dawn um mm. I, I think punishment fitting the crime um but mm. that could just be reaching because eventually zanesha becomes joy boy's companion so maybe that doesn't work that is interesting too i never thought of the minks having their own homeland and then it being destroyed that's mm. i never thought about that like at all so that's that's interesting too all right, Fisa, let's keep going. Yep. I wanted, I just want to know, because they all pulled out the gats and... Oh, my God. Yeah, they're capping it. Um, okay, then. The truth under... Oh, I need to get into email mode. <laughs> the truth undeniably lies in the letter Lily left. So, pray tell, was it a deliberate choice to refer to her as Queen Lily of House Nefertari? Go ahead and divulge the full name on her letter, as written. They've got me. I suppose there really is no chance I'm leaving this room alive. I take it that there is no fib I could tell that would satisfy you enough to let me go. Your fate was decided the moment you saw Great Emu. Huh, huh. Not surprising. They can't let anyone know. The world's greatest taboo has been broken. Um, I'll keep going. Um, the atmosphere here feels a little sinister. What's going on? The truth is, the letter from Arabaster's ruler eight centuries ago was signed by Queen Nefertari D. Lily. Mm. <laughs> Nug <laughs> leap. <laughs> um, cover gets shot, and Sabo leaps over in a flame blaze. Fire fist. Whoosh. Smothered mate. Where did this one come from? Oh. I think that's three pages. Oh my gosh! You guys, right. are, in shock. Yeah. You guys are in shock. <laughs> I. You know what? <laughs> I knew, I knew that they would be the D clan. I knew Vivi would be a D. I was right with my theory. Maybe she's not Joy Boy, but I definitely knew that the Nefertaris had something to do with Joy Boy. Let's go! I was right. Maybe not all the way, but this. Oh my God! The, hmm. I'm so happy. I am so happy. Oh, best theorist. Go ahead, Larry. Sorry. <laughs> so there. So. Uh, Rouge isn't the first, uh, is the first D woman that we've ever known. And it was always a question, are there more women of Ds? And now we have Vivi. And Lily was one, two. So that's three now. Finding out the Nefertari family was also Ds makes sense because it seems like the family that's causing the greatest storm. My only question in knowing this is that if these 20 kingdoms that banded together in order to overtake the ancient kingdom, if they knew that Nefotaris were D clan members, why would they join with them? If they were the um, ultimate enemy. They, they didn't. 
I'm actually almost certain that they don't. And yeah, this... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, we've actually got a lot of implied evidence here that the D moniker has been... It is something you ascribe to yourself if you're against Emu and the world government. Um, which is something which might have been implied before. Maybe it's... But a lot of people have also considered it just a hereditary thing. I think we're looking at something of a combination. Back when the name was known, people took it upon their names, and those families who took it upon their names passed it down to their descendants. Um, but the reason why I'm saying this is because he, um, Emu says that um, if it weren't for Lily's blunder, we wouldn't have to deal with this irritation um, as much. Like, if the Poneglyphs never got out there, we wouldn't, like, if we reverse engineer what he's saying, if the Poneglyphs didn't get out there, we wouldn't have, um, ha we wouldn't have to deal with these irritating Ds cropping up, or these scholars investigating the Void Century, or these pirates searching for treasure with them. Um, so if you take that, um, you've got to assume that, okay, more Ds cropped up after Lily, um, leaked the Poneglyphs. So maybe that's a name which they ascribe to themselves. And the fact that Emu isn't certain, that Emu is like, he's confirming a suspicion here, a long-held suspicion, I think, that, oh, I was betrayed. This wasn't a mistake. This was part of a larger plan. And this letter can confirm it. Tell me what it actually said. Tell me what the name was as it was written. Confirm it. Mm, and it has the D. Saying. It's it's got the label of yes, she is the an enemy. She chose to put the D in her name. Mm. I I think that's the implication, but I could be wrong. No, I'm starting to agree with you. That actually makes sense. Wow. Listen, man. It, it, all I'm hearing is that Emu just as bad as the world government in keeping track of how much they mess up. Emo ain't no different, all right? What? I made a video. <laughs> I made a video, and I was basically like, Emu could be a oh, what are they called? Uh, like Japanese uh, uh, spirits. I can't think of it right now. Um, the uh, like, like uh, you know, like like there's a like the Rain Woman and the, like all these Japanese uh, like like spirits and ghosts. And I said like Emu could technically be one of those. I'm about to look it up right now. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> Look, it's, 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 he's a monster! I was right! I'm gonna be honest, you will never hear- This is confirmation. Somebody told me my theories never come true the other day. I don't know what theory you're talking about, but... Oh my god, I, I was saying, like, I think that, uh... Um, that emu could be, like, like a go like a ghost creature. Like, like emu could be, like, a... Like, because they're- because she's based off of, like, multiple things. Hold up, I'm gonna- I'm gonna go look at my video really quickly. I'm gonna go look, yeah. hold on. I'm, I'm too excited right now. <laughs> Give me a sec. Um, I do want to point out that it looks like we can see Emu's hair in the panel where uh, right after Sabo uses smothered mate. And it seems like Emu has long hair. Yes. But that could just be shady. It looks like Vivi. <laughs> it legit looks like Vivi. Like, it's the same hairstyle from what it looks like. The The one thing that's also crazy is, like, I knew that they were going to end up murking him, for sure. I just didn't think that the Goro say we're just gonna use Gats in order to do it, but as soon as he, they saw him, uh, he saw Emu. I was like, yeah, he's done. Well, the, he didn't. It was um the. It seems to be like an arrow shot from Emu. Well, I'll I'll say this too. The words that TCB used was, "They can't let anyone know the world's greatest taboo has been broken." Yo, yes. you know who was breaking the world's greatest taboos? Rocks. My boy. You heard me. <laughs> Which I'm again proves no. he's not a buggy D person. All right, he's not. He's not Top buggy the at all. Top all right, the verse. just saying, it's the bro. Same taboo though. Also, um, Rocks wanted to become king of the world, and that's what Emu has broken. Yeah, king this is this is very interesting too because I I didn't the one thing I didn't suspect was Sabo being here early enough to catch the conversation. I thought only he came. Immediately after Cobra was uh, shot, 
but it seems like he's heard way more than I actually was led to believe. And that's very interesting. So I wonder what the, what the conversation will be when he tells Ivankov and Dragon and then we find out when we find out what Dragon has to say back. So I would love to see the we go from the revelry back to Kamabaka Island and then be like, OK, this is what Dragon is now saying. And then we get more info on what he knows. That would be interesting for me. Going off of what he says at the top of the page, the atmosphere here feels a little sinister. What's going on? I assume he just arrived. So after he mi he missed everything before. And mm. is just catch yeah. catching this ending part. And obviously seeing Amy. So he just heard the, the Queen Nefertari was D Lily. That's it. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. I think so. You you never know. <laughs> so um I want to talk about the um the move. Um basically um we chose smothered mate um mm. for the translation. Um it's actually a shogi term. I can't remember what it was, but it means to deliver a check with a knight. Um sometimes for a win. Um, we translated it as smothered mates. Um, smothered mates can be done in shogi, but it's kind of different. But um, we went with smothered because you get smothered by, you know, smoke of the flames, it kind of fits. Yeah. Um, but also, if you look at the scene and what's happening, um, in chess, a smothered mate is achieved by checking a king, usually with a knight, um, while it's surrounded by its own pieces. Oh. And surrounded by the Gorose, Sabo jumps in, smothered mate. It's, it's cute. And this is 100% on Ryu. Um, oh, God, I'm saying more. Ryu, um, who, who, who had this amazing thing. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, God, I can't change this. This is genius. And so we did the TL note to explain it. So hopefully people like it. This is pretty dope. Um, the D in Lily's name. I think that's going to raise some questions overall. I think that's going to be a, a head cannon breaker, like a head bubble burster, because a lot of people assume that it is genetics that makes you a D. But if it is just a name, if it is just like a clan tag that you have online when you go on Call of Duty, you know what I'm saying? Like, that would make sense, too, the way you said it, Fisu. Uh, so it's very interesting, too, because immediately after Cobra says the name, Emu lashes out in anger. And uses some type of arrow uh, shadow in order to pierce him with. Because this is clearly a devil fruit from what it looks like. This wasn't like a gun that was used by the Gorosei. So that's going to be interesting too. Because even when Sabo uses the fire fist. And it smothers the Gorosei completely. It shoots straight at Emu. Maybe and then... he's like... Like maybe this is actually his body. Like maybe he's like a venom, and he can like change so, parts of his body and like, like a symbiote, out, like an arrow. Yeah. He's a yokai. A That's yokai? the word. That's so it. I was so I went so I went and I looked up. So there is a Japanese ghost uh, or yokai called the umibozu, uh, and the umibozu is a very large creature usually found out at sea. And if you're afraid or show any fear to the umibozu, it'll it'll kill you, attack you, and sink your ship. If you don't show fear to it you won't get attacked, and it has no power over you. Oh, that sounds just like Big Mom's soul power. It, it, very, yeah, it's super, it's super similar to that. Mm. But uh, a lot of people have always said, and I, uh, the Yumi Bozu were kind of seen a little bit in Thriller Bark, too, uh, where, where you see, like, those large shadowy figures. So I said it that uh, it could be possible that either the Yumi Bozu or the Rain Woman, which is another Japanese yokai, which I won't even... Uh, it's the Aminoa. I'm pronouncing it so wrong. But the Aminoa can, like, lick her hand and, like, cause rain to come down. And I said that those are probably the two greatest influences. So if you see, you see Emu start causing rain, that's just another W for, for, for the Tanuki over here. Fizo, I don't think you, you know how excited I am that something I said actually kind of came true. I, I'm... Well, we don't know just yet, so... But what I will say bit. is, I know, I, know, I, I, I know Par is going to read this chapter... And he's going to be like, my shadow theory makes so much sense. Because he's going to be like, yo, this is basically Gecko Moria's power. Which is very interesting too. Is that how important is Gecko Moria, which will lead then to all the Blackbeard stands being like, Blackbeard's the smartest man in the universe. And this is why he didn't kill Moria, because he somehow knows about Emu. And he's somebody, he's probably Emu's dad. It's just like, they go on and on, right? Well, so it's no, like, Emu's dad. No. <laughs> it's going to be very interesting as a what this devil fruit power would mean uh, 
uh, going forward with shadows and darkness and such. So the Yami Yami and, you know, uh, the shadow ability seems to be very, uh, seems to hold a little bit more weight now um, if Emo's doing it. I, I just saw a comment in chat that we should probably discuss, and that's Sabo basically, uh, not Sabo, <laughs> um, Emu basically ate the flames. Yes. We didn't see what's past that, but yeah, he did basically just munch on the flame. Yeah. Or absorbed it somehow. Or absorbed it. I will say this. This is going to the power scaling area real quick. I just saw Sabo one shot the, the Gorose. So all of y'all can eat my shorts, bro. All right. Yeah. Let's see what happens. <laughs> he said, let's see what happens. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. I, I guess. Keep going. Is, it, is it my turn? <laughs> yeah, it's your I, turn, I Larry. Yeah, I mean, I keep going, but it's up to you. Um, all right, then we go to Sabo, and we see basically the <laughs> what am I looking at? I'm looking at a bunch of figures, um, clearly shadow figures with eyes. How many are there? There's there's five. There's the, they're the mm. girls, eh? <laughs> they're the yeah, girls, Larry eh? immediately proven <laughs> wrong. Yeah. Let's continue. <laughs> no. And Larry be saying, I'd be taking W's too early. He's like, Don't, yeah. we haven't read it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't have to clown on you. All right, all right. So, Sabo uh, is above uh, Cobra. Cobra is lying on the floor out of his wheelchair. And Sabo goes, I was hoping I'd be able to take you all out in one move. Pant, pant. After all, there was no way I could have known that hell loca was located here at the very top of the world. And then we hear Cobra and he's still alive. And he goes, ah, wheeze, wheeze. And then we see a Denden Mushi on the wall and it goes snap. And then it takes a picture of Sabo. He realizes it. And then Cobra goes cough, cough. You, you are Luffy Kun's brother, aren't you? And then he goes, you're with a revolutionary army and you still stepped in to save me. Cough. And then Sabo goes, our cause is more concerned with the monsters that sit above the kings and queens of the world. Do you know Luffy somehow? And then Cobra, while dying out, says he once stepped in to save me too. And then Sabo stares at him for a moment and says, Haha, that sounds like him all right. Then we see all of these uh, Gorosei members. We see the five and then we see emu in the back with huge white eyes and then we hear sabo take cobra and cobra goes leave me i'm dead weight he goes you have a better chance of escaping on your own and then sabo goes not gonna happen cobra then says there's something i've come to understand and sabo goes huh and then he goes and if you were and if you die here we'll be in trouble because i need you to deliver a message to luffy kun and vivi you want me to tell them something? And then Cobra goes, tell them we share the moniker D. And then Sabo goes, what? And then he goes, I finally know the path Alabasta must follow. And then we go to a flashback and it says, so you both have D in your name. And then this is a flashback between Sabo, Luffy, and Ace as kids. And then we hear, is that just a coincidence or something? And then Luffy goes, er, I guess. And then ace goes who cares it's a name a name's a name and then they say do you want a d in your name sabo and he goes what and he was like you can be sad d sad dot bo sad bo <laughs> <laughs> and he goes why'd you put it there and then we hear da ha 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 and then we see these arrows shoot forward and then it pierces cobra again and then we see uh sabo get put off balance and then it pierces Sabo too, which is kind of crazy. And then Sabo and a uh, Sabo and Cobra are both on the ground. Sabo yells out King Cobra. And then we see this black figure open its mouth. And then we hear Cobra get up and he goes, cough, the Poneglyphs. And then he stands in front of Sabo, which kind of resembles Dr. Clover or Professor Clover. And then we see some wording, but in front of it is huge roar and... It's from the animalistic Gorosei, I'm guessing. And then it goes, fly the flag that heralds the world's eventual dawn. Nefotari D. Lily, I'm counting on you, Sabo Kun. Hold on. This must be protected? 
Uh, yeah, I can tell you what it says because I wrote it. <laughs> um, all right, all right, all right. Hold, um, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. That's the that's the end of the page. Yeah, tell me what that says. Um, I believe it says the poneglyphs must be protected. Uh, okay. The poneglyphs must be protected. Fly the flag that heralds the world's eventual dawn. Um, so basically, in Japanese, um, he's also being spoken over, but in Japanese, it's even worse because um. The left-hand side is also very obscured. On the left-hand side, the only words you can actually make out are fly the flag and world's dawn. Um, so the rest is a bit of guesswork on our part. Um, we have we obviously have a bit of room to play with because the right-hand side's obscured. Um, but obviously, you, we, we couldn't like stack all the words to the right and try and cover it up more. <laughs> um, it seems like Cobra is quoting Lily's letter here. Oh, shit. so that's why there's quotation marks, and he's he's quoting the ending of Lily's letter. Oh my God, I and now I'm like, what does this say? <laughs> this, is... this letter has to be on Alabasta still, correct? Like, like they're uh, they're unless they're. He left it with Vivi, like, um, like a oh. or something, which I'm almost certain he left it with Vivi. You know what's gonna happen? You know what's gonna happen? Vivi's gonna find that letter at Alabasta, and then she's gonna give it to Morgan. Oh, uh, Vivi ain't ever going back to Alabasta, I don't think. <laughs> well, if she ever gets the letter, I think she would give it to Morgan, right? Like, what better Maybe. news would he want than that? Could... That's actually a good idea. Oh, I don't know how to. Uh, I don't know how to take all this. This is crazy. So I guess we'll start from Stable having these mythical creatures. And I'm pretty yeah. sure there's Owens. Don't you think that some of these look like the guards in Impel Down? Like the one on the left is the giant cow. <laughs> it looks like we got a rhino on the right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like they, they they look very familiar in certain ways. It kind of reminds me of the Zodiac a little bit. Like like one of them looks like a bull. One of them looks like a what is it like a hen or chicken? Mm -hmm. We already uh, have the Zodiac theming with the um navy code names like um it's more or less we've got like pink um rabbit um red dog etc etc for all of the admiral code names and um black horse and all the other ones that have been introduced more recently oh man i have no idea what this can mean so do are we are we suggesting in this chapter that emu and the gorosei are fighters I don't know what to think about this. This is weird. It almost seems like they're aspects of him. <laughs> like... Exactly. It seems like this is like a pain type of Naruto thing going on. Where like they all share similar powers. But but they do call him Great Emu and show him a lot of reverence. Especially if he's the one giving them power, right? Hmm. That's very That could possible. be too. Because they're all kind of with that like shadowy type thing. And yes, this could be Oda's shadows, but it's like there is definitely like a scheme going on here with like Emu's power and all this stuff. Yo guys, you remember when uh the camera got taken out on Vegapunk? Uh I said Vegapunk on Egghead Island. You remember that silhouette that we had where it destroyed the snail? Oh, that's a great cool. Does it look like anything like here? Because I don't remember it too much, but I think it definitely looked like Saturn. But which one is Saturn? Where, where's Saturn located? Hold on. Um, let me let me see where Saturn. Saturn's on the left. He's the he's the very left one. He's the bull. Hmm. Saturn's the maybe. bull. Him transforming, maybe like like these are like their. I would assume these are probably Zoan type devil fruits. So maybe he was in like, you know what I mean? Like like or like special Zoan types. I don't know. They look awake in too. Yeah. I've picked the bone to pick with this um, setup here. Um, we see Sabo, he's in the exact pose where that um, photo was taken of him, and sure enough, we've got the camera there mm -hmm. um, taking shots. What I want to know is, um, presumably Emu comes and sits on this throne every now and again. Why is there a camera feed to this top secret like place where like you, you shouldn't have anyone there watching? Is he like a Twitch streamer? <laughs> like I, I, I don't, I, I don't understand why, why they would even install a camera. It could be because they were, they knew that Cobra was coming in here and Cobra was gonna get killed, right? Like they were gonna murk him off, and uh, then so they, they want, to, want... Like, frame someone. 
Yeah, and they wanted to frame somebody, so they may have, like, taken one of the revolutionaries and done it anyways. And Sabo just happened to come in when they were talking about the emu stuff. Like, I assume it was probably somebody was supposed to stumble in, because it's weird that Sabo, like, kind of just stumbled in. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he wasn't really looking for that specifically. So it's like, hmm. I just shared my, the page that I was talking about. Yeah, that... And it's very similar to, I mean, it's silhouetted, but the eyes too. And we know that Saturn is there. He just doesn't look like a bull. So that was foreshadow, maybe. I, th I uh, think that was foreshadowing, yeah. But um, I will say this, the Zoans are awakened. They have the sash around their, their, yeah, their shoulders. Oh my um, god. I do not know what's going on. Oda, oh, there. Oda's so good, bro. Oda's so good. It's so weird that he could be every chapter consistently confusing you, but making you curious and excited at the same time. Like, this dude has done it nonstop since Egg had started. It is. Oda did not write Wano. <laughs> Oda didn't write Wano. He definitely didn't write Wano. Yo. An he editor goes have. for it. But... <laughs> this is crazy. Um, I feel like Wano was very, like, con like i wouldn't say condensed but it was also drawn out so like the plans changed in wano quite a bit i feel like from beginning to end the so, pacing was really weird it was too fast but he didn't know how to do it mm -hmm. so it just felt like a lot of content was was not paced correctly but egghead i don't know this this is a different oda this this the... is like peak mm -hmm. this for is... sure and the pacing has been really good too agree all right. Um, something I want to point out here is um, Sabo um, is continuing his trend of being very hardcore. Like last time, he was like, "I think I can live with it. Um, I, I think I can live with how things turned out if it helps the revolution." And here he's like, "I was hoping I'll take you all out in one move." So did he like sneak into like keep, continue his like escapade into um, P Pangea Castle? In the hopes of assassinating all five Gorosei? <laughs> yeah, he's a wild boy. Yo, that's actually really funny. He, lit he literally thought he was going to walk in there and just take out everybody and, and then just leave. Yeah. <laughs> right, this <laughs> doesn't confirm that the Gorosei are strong, by the way. Because they didn't land one attack on him. Just saying. But... It turns out that um, the Holy Land is hell, though. I actually like that a lot. Yeah, that was... I mean, that's kind of always been suspected, too. Because they had, like slaves under the escalator that they had going on and how they run their lives but it is very interesting because it you did say it earlier that luffy was like yo just have the d in your name sabo be sad bo <laughs> sad bo <laughs> Dude, that crazy. what's really funny about luffy Bro. doing that sad debo um is that luffy like doesn't seem to understand that it's like a middle initial and so he's like <laughs> inserted it in the middle of Sabo's name because <laughs> he's like a seven year old. There's no way that Oda sang sad boy, right? Instead of joy sad boy. Sad boy. <laughs> Yo, actually. No, Yo, I'm gonna punch the computer screen, bro. There's no, no way there's... Oda would do this to us. There's like yeah, all different there's is. like all different like at like facets. There's like sad mm. boy, angry boy. You know little, 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 little trouble boy. I do, have boy. To, I, I do have to say that I love Oda's consistency with Ace's character because when everybody's talking about names, he goes, who cares? A name's a name. It just goes back yeah. to him just saying, like, Roger's name basically ruined his life. And he's like, yo, yeah. like, a name's a name, bro. Like, don't think of it that way. That's but very interesting for me. I love that. I also like how casual... This is, this is the third thing. Like, I was talking earlier about the stuff which suggested that D might be something adopted after the Lily stuff. This is the third thing that seems to suggest that a name doesn't really matter and Luffy casually throws out, why don't you put the D in your name? Um, it, it feels very much like, you know... Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't matter what you're born as, it, it matters what you choose. So I think... Oda is might be um he might not be, but he might be assuaging a lot of the fears people had about these being the chosen ones. That does make sense too. I like that a lot more now that you mention it. Because having the reincarnation already implemented with Shirohoshi and such, that makes sense as to why like the the conversation has really been if we talk about Ichigo being born with everything and luffy being born with everything and you know goku having this thing. it's like 
what's so different about Luffy then? Like, why would he be the same? He's he has this god fruit. He has this. He has that. He's born under the the monkeys. Like, he's just destined for greatness. Where it's like, well, now he has a choice to be great. You know, like that's that's a choice that was made by him. It wasn't necessarily inherited through reincarnation. He's not another Naruto or Hashirama or Ashura. He's legit just Luffy. And I love that idea so much because that's what can make or break a show, in my opinion. Like the main character doesn't always have to win, but they do have a they have to have a good enough reason as to why they're winning. They they can't just be the shonen protagonist where they're just consistently always winning. There's no tension behind that. There's no good storytelling. So I think just choosing to have the D in your name makes it so it it's not like that. I love that, actually. You know what's really interesting, though, is that they say this with the Ace, Sabo, Luffy stuff. Uh, and what's funny is that Ace, Sabo, and Luffy weren't born as brothers. They became brothers. Bang. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and, I th- and I think it's that's a similar parallel to that, where you can become a D-Clan by just adding it to your name and carrying on the will of D. Which, which you're right, is basically what One Piece is. It's all about, like, carrying on people's wills. Mm-hmm. Like, any- and anybody can do it. Uh, and I think it's one of the best things about One Piece is that anybody can become great. It just depends on what you as a person are. Uh, um, that actually segues and ties in beautifully with Cobra's um, final uh, message to Vivi and Luffy, which is, tell them we share the moniker D. We are all Ds, too. Um, probably referring to him and um, Vivi, but maybe it's on a grander scale for all we know. Um, but he's talking about, I finally know the path which Arabasta must follow. Um, which is very interesting, because I thought that Arabasta's fate was to be, like, a, like either, like, annexed by the world government, and they would, like, look for the Poneglyphs, or, like, they'll just be, like, a puppet, and, like, maybe they'll go to war against the revolutionaries angry at Sabo. Maybe, like, Koza will, like, get the wrong idea again and start attacking someone who doesn't deserve it, like he did with Cobra. Um, but no, this seems to imply that Arabasta has a greater purpose in the story um, to revolt a- along with the other countries. So I'm so, looking forward to seeing what happens there. Yeah, this is going to be super interesting. Uh, before we continue, guys, hold on. Uh, we have $2 super chat from uh, Nertaku says, Gotta sleep, I'll watch later, fire. Uh, hashtag agenda piece. We got Mike Super with the two says, Nah, Blackbeard's still not a... Hashtag bumbeard. Uh Flame C with the five says it would be kind of cool because Ace had that happy face and sad face pin on his hat. Oh, I like it. That's a good one. Uh Ryonosuke with the five says, Big Mom has a daughter whose fruit allows her to combine with other siblings. Like her powers are shared with her siblings. Emu could be the same case. This like an all like a one for all. You know what I mean? Where one for all can like combine certain quirks and stuff. Yeah. Could be like a similar case. Alright. So uh This is a this is a mighty fine chapter and you yo, T C B just shout out to y'all for just like being able to translate this and you editing this the way it is. Like I, I'm pretty sure this must have been exciting but also super difficult to be like yo i have to nail this down because of yeah the insane and you guys have nailed it. it it's people's first impression of the chapter and hopefully people do support the official release and check out and compare and if if they're able to um but we don't take it lightly that we have a responsibility to try and portray things accurately and in a way people can understand and in a, in a way that's fun yeah. Um, so yeah, hopefully we do that, and when we don't, we go back and we fix stuff. So if anyone reads our past stuff, you might notice a few differences here and there. Um, if we ever get anything wrong, thankfully the last like um, I don't know, I want to say like few months, we haven't had to correct anything too major, so we're on a good streak. Yeah, and you guys are doing yeah, great. it's just great to feel the love from the community. So that's awesome. Yeah, so we have over 300 viewers in chat right now. I want to say thank you to everybody being here. You guys are amazing. If you could throw the like button, can you just like the hell out of this video? Give Chestnut some love. Give us some love. Give Fiso some love. Give some W's so far for just us reading the chapter and you guys just being here. We're very appreciative of you being here. Also, if you haven't joined our Discord, please join our Discord. Like, literally, it's it's. We have the most healthiest Discord in the world. I guarantee you. And you can talk One Piece with us. 
But other than that, let's continue. Uh, Chestnut? All right. I'm excited. Okay. So then... Uh, so the next panel we get is... Uh, so so after it's like I'm counting on you Sabo Kun and then King Cobra you must live on and I'm assuming like Cobra dies which another character death mm -hmm. but it's in a flashback so does it count it, it, to, be, it, to be fair we have known Cobra though you know what I mean like we've known Cobra for a while nah bro this so. flashback come on no, sis no 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 sis. they can't it's be a flashback, flashback sis. it is a flashback <laughs> okay but to be fair, this isn't, like, an actual, like, we meet this character in a flashback, though. Like, we've known. You know what I mean? And Cobra yeah. has died, and everybody's like, yeah. do you remember people saying Cobra was alive still? Uh, that's uh, true. Yeah, I'm 2019 gang. Like, as soon as this chapter came up with, like, Sabo, what happened? Everyone's looking at the newspaper. I was like, they definitely blamed, uh, blamed Cobra's <laughs> death on Sabo. <laughs> and uh, I'm so glad that um, Oda actually went through with it. It's, it's such a dynamic way to go with the plot. I, I love it. I love how Oda is just, he, he's just marking people. And, and I think it's something that One Piece has desperately needed. It, my one criticism of One Piece has always been that I think he doesn't go all the way with a lot of characters. And some characters have finished their character arcs and sometimes need to die. Uh, this is amazing. Oh. I'm, I'm so stoked. <clears throat> I agree. I, see, I, when I watch a One Piece, no, get out of here. <laughs> Listen, I watch a One Piece cut uh, where they don't bring Pell back. They just stop alabaster when they're looking at pell's grave and it's so much better. yeah <laughs> I, think they, I think they edit him out like they clip scenes of him from like <laughs> the referee it's so funny <sighs> but all right so then we see there's there's like the jojo menace like behind the wall and we see somebody's eye and then we see waffle and he's going ah, he is dead cobra the senile has gone and got himself killed <sighs> I never liked him, but how can I celebrate after witnessing something so terrifying? <laughs> Yo. Ow, I, I went with Cobra the Senile to, like, kind of make it seem like a kingly title, like, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, I love know, it. William the Conqueror. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it's not quite written like that in Japanese, but I thought it was fun. <laughs> I no, I I actually I like this. And it this chapter is really funny though. Despite how much horrible stuff is happening, it's hilarious. Yeah. I've stumbled upon the biggest skeleton in the government's closet. I don't even want to know who that is. They will end me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so funny. The grand round table in the council chamber. It seems that King Cobra and King Wapple are not present. We just received word that the two of them will not be attending and that we are to proceed without them. We get this, like, Abraham Lincoln-looking fellow. Uh, perhaps King Cobra's impassioned speech drained him. Wahaha. Maybe he considers his job done now that the dissolution of the warlords have been approved. And then we see, let us move on to the remaining matters on the agenda. Now then, Concerning the coalition of the four northern nations calling for independence. Ooh. That's, that's gonna be crazy. That's gonna be rough. Any ideas what those four could be? The four nations? Yeah, I mean, we, we know a few. Like, Nolan, some country. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Law, some country. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think the four nations, one of them is definitely gonna be Dressrosa. If I think Dress Rosa would probably be it. Uh, uh, northern nations, northern nations. Oh, northern nations. Oh, northern Who are the nations. Northern, who are the northern One Piece nations? Like Law's home country. Um, oh, what was that? Like I know it's like Florence something. Levant. Is that Levant? Levant. Yeah, um, yeah, the, the white, the, the white. Um, wherever um, Nolan is from. There's a few others. Jive? No, Jaya is in the New World. I mean, mm. so Jaya is in the Grand Line. It's in Paradise. Wait, are the Northern Nations in one, like in the North Blue, right? I assume so. Yeah, I they mean, would it, have to be. It just is North Nations, so. Yeah, so it's the Vin Smoke Rain, the Nolans, uh, the White City, which is basically. Oh, hold on, my bad. Uh, Levniel, which is the homeland of. Uh, Nolan Spider Miles, a port town that contains a waste processing unit. 
um, Flea Lance, which is the hometown of Law, Minion Island, which is the hide hideout of the Barrel Pirates, Rubeck Island, an island that used to be an exchange spot between the Barrel Pirates and the Marines for the Opie Opie no Mi, Swallow Island, an island with the shape of a swallow, homeland of Shachi and Penguin, Notice, homeland of Bellamy and the other members of the Bellamy Pirates, Kuin Village, homeland of Baby Five, Dual Kingdom, a kingdom ruled by Chap, affiliated with the world government, Whiteland Kingdom, a kingdom ruled by uh, Iwatobi, affiliated with the world government, North Pole, one of the world's extremes, Surume's homeland. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Maybe Baby Five's home country. Uh, if you remember, there was a lot of thing about starvation, and that's been a really big trend. Uh, so I could see like Baby Five's uh, uh, nation kind of rebelling against the world government, maybe even going to like Cross Guild. And I have a wacky theory. Um, oh, hey, TCB's in the chat. Um, not me. Um, thinking him above. Um... Yeah, you got yo TCB's in the <laughs> chat, man. We got yeah. Fiso, bro. <laughs> uh, thanks for sharing love. Um, no sir. Um. So thinking about what was I saying, um, I've got a bit of a crazy theory. Mm. Um, Judge in Whole Cake Island has a photo. Oh, hello? Oh, sorry, I thought I disconnected. Um, Judge in Whole Cake Island has a photo of himself um, with the four heads of kings he decapitated. Mm -hmm. um, Sanji looks at it and says, who could put something so garish up? Um, I thought maybe it might be cool if um, Judge killed four kings in the North Blue, and now these four rulerless nations are trying to secede or something. Mm, that would be cool. Like that, that would be one. that would be really interesting, considering that Judge and Caesar have kind of teamed up right now. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're making their move as well. I would like that. I, I would like that. I feel like that'd be really interesting. Like, like we might be seeing multiple forces and not just Cross Guild. Because everybody thought, I thought they were maybe going to uh, join up with Cross Guild. But if they don't, and they think that they could do it by themselves because they have the, the, like, their own army, like, they could just start, like, going after people. Yo, so Lionel came up, Lionel's, like, one of the guys on our podcast. He came up with an interesting idea about Flea Vance, the homeland of law. He said that the reason why the white lead was there was due to a government experimentation. And they experimented on the citizens of Flea Vance. And they knew that it was poison the whole time. So they used it as a planting ground to get them like riches and stuff like that and to produce more of this stuff. And then once the people like started getting sick and they noticed like people couldn't have kids and the kids that they would have started to die out so much faster, right? That it was a government experiment to see what the white lead disease would do to nations over time to hide the fact that they were actually trying to take out certain nations so they experimented with flea vans mm -hmm. so if this is true and law knows this information then that country if anyone survived is probably one of the ones that are rising up against too that was like yo we don't want to be affiliated with you anymore but it doesn't say that they're yeah, affiliated yeah. with the world government but um it seems like they the word coalition maybe um I would have to look into it just to make sure we got this right, but maybe they're banding together, making their own, like, Northern Union, <laughs> which would be kind of interesting or wacky. Yeah, um, like, every sea starts... The, the four nations live together in harmony, and everything, <laughs> but everything changed. Everything changed. Wait, wait, so... Of a double six attack. Hold on. <laughs> Fiso, when you guys were, were doing the, the translating and editing and stuff like that, did you guys have the the... What was it? The eleven countries that were revolting against their kingdoms. Uh, it was twelve, 12? that revolted, but only eight were successful. Are is that is that somehow part of this too? Like these four. Nations? I don't know. <laughs> um, it, it seems like they're um calling for independence or like the like. It, 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 I don't think so because I think the twelve that revolted happened after Reverie. If you look at I think it's chapter 1054. Um, they say that these nations rose up while their kings were at reverie. And obviously these guys don't look too panicked. So I doubt the news of their home countries rebelling while they're away um, has gotten to them yet. So I think mm. the 12 are of the 50 that attended the reverie. And eight of those 12 were successful and were able to um, stage a coup while their rulers were at reverie or coming back from reverie. Mm. Okay. All right. My bad, Chestnut. You can keep going. No, I'm good. I'm good. 
Uh, oh, somebody also mentioned I forgot to say emu. Hmm, who's there? Oh, I did it. <laughs> now, now I got emu as a emu's no longer British. I'm I'm not Fizu's emu. I'm, yeah. I'm evil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then and then we see all of these, and then we have uh. I forgot Fushiro Hoshi's brother. Uh, Fukaboshi. Fukaboshi. There we go. And so Fukaboshi's saying, Shirahoshi, the conference is almost over. Let's go wait at the Red Port. We won't have to deal with these celestial dunces there. Epic burn. I forgot he his name already. Celestial dragon in kanji, but the um, kana is like baka. <laughs> like, it's like <laughs> idiot. <laughs> so, I, I... Um, or something. So, yeah, that, that's why we did the pun on that. <laughs> I, I like I like the pun. I like the pun better than just saying like celestial stupids or something. Yeah, like, I was like, okay, what's a word that starts with a D and dunces? There we go. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> I I love it. Uh and then Shira, and then they asked Shirahoshi, You okay? I was hoping to say goodbye to Princess Vivi. I wonder where she went. Look at so look at this gal pal. Something I want to talk about with Shirahoshi is that she speaks stupidly formally. Like, in the anime, I, like, you'll be like, Luffy-sama's grandfather-sama. <laughs> like that. Like... <laughs> Yo, she, Shirahoshi, Shirahoshi's adorable. Okay? I, I, I don't understand the hate. She's no longer a crybaby. She's, she's, she's just, you know, she's very polite. You know, she'll only scream if she's gonna, about to be put into slavery. Like, what a nice girl. What a nice young lady. Yeah, when that's your um, tolerance boundary, you're pretty tough. <laughs> I agree. Too too much hate on on Shirahoshi. I think this is my last page, right? Uh, yes. I think so. Yeah. Okay. So then we get uh, the forehead queen herself. What's the big idea? You <laughs> better untie me. Whose orders are you following? And then we see Vivi, and she's just tied to a chair. Honestly, she could probably just stand up and and get out of it. To be honest, but. You know, a, a guest room in Pangea Castle. I'll tell the whole world about this. Oh my god, and now it's Larry's favorite. Everybody from Eni's Lobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jabra's cool, bro. Yo, like, yo, Jabra actually looks sick. And, and look at look at Khalifa. Khalifa's a rockin'. Yeah, she's fire. Yeah, so we see both uh, Jabra and Khalifa. And, and Jabra goes, hey, easy there, you're being too forward. Gotta play your cards closer to your vest if you want a shot at being free, you know. You're one feisty chick. And then uh, we see Khalifa. I'm afraid no one's going to help you, princess. <laughs> Once your disappearance is made known, you'll probably live the rest of your life like a pet. Mm. It's crazy how much Jabra looks like Queen, bro. I'm glad that we're rid of Jabura as a spelling. I mean, spelled correctly as Jabra, even in <laughs> Japanese. Yeah. Look at uh, uh, Bluno in the back. Are they like playing cards? They're like just chilling. Chop up Oz in the back, chilling too. Chop chop up. Uh, yeah, I I'll never call him the right name ever. What's chop his name? Oz, like my thing. Fuku Fukuro. Fukuro. Yeah. Fukuro. Yeah. I know. I know Fukuro, but I don't know. I still. I still forgot his name. Go ahead. The one with the long hair. Midori. Yeah. No. Yo yo yo. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> when Chopper like threw him across two islands, that yeah. shit was crazy. Yo, who does that better, Odin or um, <laughs> Kumadori? It's Kumadori. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's Kumadori I... because when he was in the fridge and Chopper kept opening it up to take like the different types of colas to throw at Frankie, and he kept going, yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> God, and his lobby is hilarious. Yo, it is lobby, bro. I'm telling you, peak one piece. Okay. All right, but let's continue. Um, we've done three pages. Should we recap or? Uh, no, we got we have the we have another page. Yep. Uh, okay. There, yeah, there's there's only a couple left. We can we can finish it up. Okay. Um. So do we switch or? Yep. yep go ahead. Yeah, you can go for you. Okay then. Um. Is your Hoshi all right? Seriously, now's not the time to be worrying about others, little Missy. We received word that more trouble broke out around her earlier, but she apparently came out of the ordeal unscathed. Thank goodness. The punks who ended up assaulting the celestial dragon that tried to kidnap the mermaid princess 
boldly proclaimed their victory, giving their names and everything. The guests in the courtyard were stunned. We're members of the Straw Hat Fleet! And we see, <laughs> um, we see um, Leo and um, Sai showboating. And then we cut over and we see a panel of Fujitora standing off against Ryukyugu. And meanwhile, meanwhile, at the home of the gods, Fujitora's actions helped the revolutionary army free the slaves. And that obviously pissed Ryukyugu off. So they went at it. What's the deal with this year's reverie? Like a pet? Give me a break. Looks like I'm gonna have to do something about this. Ah! And we hear a noise coming from somewhere. Vivi looks confused and puzzled. And then, boom! And we see Waffle take a bite out of the wall. Spare me! I didn't see a thing! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Um, Waffle? And she's shocked, and Waffle takes another bite. Out of the way! Vivi, this is my chance, seizing on the opportunity. Move already! You'll never take me alive! <laughs> And then we cut upwards and chop! <laughs> uh, what was that? I think it was King Waffle. And so obviously CP um, zero are all stunned. Uh, hey, wait a sec. Vivi's gone, huh? And we see the whole building shaking. And then we cut and we see Waffle's wife, his um, one and only. Oh, darling. I've been looking for you, heart. Where the devil have you been? And who is the young lady with you? Hey, Waffle, how much further are you going to go? As far as it takes. I'll run to the ends of the world if I have to. Sounds good to me. Let's go. Don't tell me you're running away with a mistress. <laughs> and she's, um, you know, flipping out, thinking that her husband's leaving her. Um, which she which he is. <laughs> um, eloping to start a life on the run. <laughs> and that is how we end the chapter. <laughs> with hijinks. <laughs> Oh man, so so much greatness in this chapter, bro. So much. The fact that Fuji and Ryo Kyugu ended up fighting, <laughs> like this is like, yo, why did Fuji? Like, what did Fuji Toro do? Did he do something like Dress Rosa again? It's not clear. Like, did he protect the slaves? Like, was Ryo Kyugu going to attack, and he like just defended them, and that helped the revolutionaries, or did he literally go around like freeing slaves while they, while he had the chance? We don't know. All we know is he somehow helped them, and Ryo Kyugu. It's not clear if they fought, fought, or if they like you know mm -hmm. had bitter words. <laughs> um, they they went at it. This is this is very interesting. Because they, it was funny because when they first introduced Green Bull, him and Fujitora were just sitting, just chilling, like talking about like their conversation that was with Akainu. Like they, they seemed like the cool uh, brothers out of the the admirals, right? But these guys I, are like now fighting. So I'm like, I feel like Oda like, changed his character because like back in like Reverie, Ryukyugi was like, ah, maybe I'll eat of a woman, like of a, of a pretty lady served me food, and now he's like a completely different person. He's like a Sakazuki fanboy and stuff. Yeah, yo, Jabra looks so much like well, Queen looks so much like Jabra, like the glasses, the hair, the mustache, all that's there, bro. But Jabra's so much cooler. But it's funny that now we know now CP Zero knows that Sai and the Hapo Navy and the Tantadas from Dress Rosa are part of the the Straw Hat fleet. <laughs> That's so funny, bro. Wapo of all people, man. Yo, Fiso, do you know his wife's laugh? Oh God, was it like? I can't remember, but like I think Viz did something like gold dig dig dig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> Her laugh is gold dig 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 dig. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, she's a gold digger. That's why. That's funny. But nah, this. Uh, you know what we're gonna do? We're going to round table. Uh, start with Chestnut first. What'd you think of the chapter? You know, ten one out of ten. ten. Ten out of ten. Absolutely yeah. wonderful. I was, you know how much people were like, Joy Boy couldn't possibly be a woman. Lily didn't have that significance. Lil Lily is emu. I have been, even if Lily is not Joy Boy, the fact that I that I was like, you know, Lily is probably a part of the D-Clan. It was probably one of the first D-Clan members. Mm -hmm. 
just, I, I am so validated at this point. I don't even care what happened in the rest of the chapter. This is like one of my first big theories that I've gotten like a lot of pushback on that was just right. Like, and I, and I knew it. I was like, you guys are overlooking the significance of Alabasta and the will of D. And, and, and it, like, if Cobra is asking about that, like, yeah, it, it's going to be. And, and I kind of stuck with that theory and I went with it. And I'm glad I did because I, I got it right. So I'm pretty stoked. Other than that, uh, I think that seeing what Emu is like this monster type thing is also really cool. Uh, because mm -hmm. there's definitely been a lot of influences with, like, different yokais uh, and, like, monsters. And, like, the, you know, we were talking about, like, like the monster of the imagination. Uh, and, I th and I think it's interesting. And I, and I don't think we're going to get more on this. Although I said that last week, too, where it's like, oh, we're just going to stop and go. But I don't, I don't think we're going to get more on this until we actually start seeing, like, a different arc. Or, or start seeing more of, like, Saturn back on Egghead. And maybe we'll get more information that way. But... It's crazy that we're starting to get this information now, and this is this is Endgame One Piece. It's it's crazy, and I, I'm here for it. I give this chapter a ten out of ten. All right, Fiso with the great voice acting, by the way. Thank you so much for it. But what did you think? And if you can speak on the behalf of TCB uh, staff as well, what did they think about the chapter? Oh gosh, you know, we didn't really have too much time to talk about the chapter. <laughs> um, a lot of us just go to bed or go to work right after. Um, so I haven't had the chance to pick everyone's brains yet, but we were all really excited. Um, and especially me, Alec, I I've been waiting for us to get to this kind of thing. And sure, we didn't really get too much um, elaboration on what the Will of D is, but what I think we did get was... Um, an amazing explanation on what Arabasta's backstory is and an implication on where Oda's is taking it. And the fact that Lily propagated the will of D and spread it around along with the Poneglyphs, it's a very significant role, like um, Tanuki was saying. And I think that's wonderful um, to have um, Vivi's ancestor being just as um, significant as Vivi herself. Um, I, I was actually going to point this out, but. Um, I was thinking, is Vivi like a secret badass here? Because she's like, like a pet, give me a break. It looks like I'm going to have to do something about this. If Wapple didn't come, was she going to do like throw hands or something? Like try and get out of there herself? Um, but yeah, I, I loved everything about the chapter from its comedy to its lore dropping um, to just the way it expands like the world government, like. I mean, we've got a lot of the like the four nations thing we talked about. It's it's fun how the kings take shots at King Cobra for mm -hmm. not showing up. Um, from Emu and the Gorose, um, all well, like the Gorose seemingly are fighters. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. But I feel like the what Oda's done here is he is significantly building up the threat. Um, of the final villains of the series. So even though he's not ready to quite pull the curtain back completely, um, it's like the first time we see the influence of Kaido or Big Mom or all of these um, really, really awful figures we fight eventually. I mean, obviously the world governments have always been like, you know, a force of evil and we've always felt their effects, but now we're actually seeing the heart of it. And it's just breathtaking that we're here after... Um, over 1080 chapters so yeah i'm here for it thank you thank you thank you both for time oh what's your one through ten you said it was a 10 out of 10 oh um i'll probably go with a nine nine okay. yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> that's not like what are you talking yeah. about bro yeah. what are you yeah. talking about fizo <sighs> okay like 10 would be like this would make my like montage of like the greatest moments of the series like luffy ringing the bell um at skypea and we see his shadow or like um luffy and usopp making up or something like that like mm -hmm. this doesn't have like a key moment where i think yes this is something which is going to be iconic and i'll make lists this is just an amazing development on the setup we got last week and yeah so yeah, it's basically there already. I'm just being pernickety. Um, for me, I would I would say this is a nine out of ten as well. Um, I won't say it's a ten out of ten, but nine out of ten for sure. 
I, I think I love the flow of the chapter. I loved how TCB as well and the staff, you guys just made the conversation flow so well. The, the, the complicated, intricate web that Oda's spinning right now seems to unbe like unraveling a bit, but at the same time, it's still there. Like it's still catching me and I can't get away from it. Um, I don't know what to say about this chapter besides what we already talked about. Um, but I'm more, I, I keep finding myself going back to the silhouettes of the Gorose and of Eam. I think the conversation is there. I think we all know what the conversation is. Uh, that part right now is what's intriguing to me because it's now speaking that most people have devil fruits at this level. I don't necessarily think they're the strongest in the show because I think that hockey is still prevalent. But like, for example, I'm looking at like each of the Gorose and where they're standing in comparison to what they look like in their silhouetted forms. And you can see that the guy who's holding the sword, the Gorose, that's like bald, uh, he had like he's the one that's like closest to Emu. And the guy uh, with the long white hair and the long white beard, and he's like the tallest out of all of them. He's the bird. So it's like, oh. it's like, I don't know what to think about the Gorose now. And I don't know what to think about Emu at all. Like I'm completely shattered in that department. Um, and then the next oh. one is, which I find very interesting, is the one part where Cobra gets up and he says something. And I know that you guys wrote must be and then something else. Like it could be protected, collected or whatever. But yeah, I don't necessarily it. think that that's what that says. There's too much space in between the word protected in order to be something else. So I think that's very curious. If it is something must be protected, I wonder what that means. Does that mean like the will of the person? Does that mean like the dreams of a person? And it, it for me, it brings up the question, why did Roger decide to have himself executed? We've never gotten an answer to that. But I feel like to inspire the next generation. It's to inspire the next generation, but it's also like, what did Roger exactly know about the world history and why did he choose to do such things when he had the ability to, you know, live a life of comfort until his death? Like, he chose to leave Rouge, who he loved. And she was also a D, right? So what does that mean for her character? Does she say, listen, this is what the world is too in my eyes. I think you should do this. And he said, okay. Like, Roger was dying anyway, though. Exactly. Be, but why not die with the love of your life before, like, while your kid is being born? Why, why go out there and put yourself in that position to inspire the world to do this thing? And it's like, we still don't have his reasons as to why he did it. So... Is what Cobra saying a part of that because of what Nepotari Lily said too? So I wouldn't be too shocked if her letter was very adjacent of what's on Laugh Tale, of what Joy Boy left behind. I think basically they're probably the same thing. So, oh man, there's so much in this chapter to keep reeling about, but there's just not enough info. But I loved it. I, I have I, a question for you guys. Where do you think we're going from here? Um, especially in regards with um, Vivi, I want to hear your thoughts, um, Chestnut, because she's already in. She's like, oh yeah, I'll go to the end of the world with you before she even hears about her father dying. Do you think she'll encounter Saba? What, what do you think is going to happen? That's really... Oh, well, this is so interesting. I think that what Vivi will probably do is immediately, I think they go meet up with Morgans. Um... There's always been a question of who actually is Morgan's. Does he have some sort of significance? Because he's always in his uh, hybrid form for, as his Owen. So it'll be interesting to see kind of what deal they strike. Um, but otherwise, once she learns about her father's death, <sighs> will Sabo get to talk to her? I'm not too sure. But I know that they probably will eventually meet if the main goal is Luffy. I would say that Vivi would probably need to go meet back up with the straw hats because at the end of the day like they're going to protect her and she knows that she like she can trust them um so i think that vivi is probably using morgan's to try to get to the straw hats and because of that sabo has to also get to luffy to give cobra's laughter words so if they meet if they if vivi and sabo meet up it'll be with luffy and they'll probably all have to try to discuss that 
Um, I and, pretty and, much agree. Yeah. I, I think that the flashback's probably going to end here, and we'll cut back to Egghead soon. Larry, mm-hmm. I got a question for you. Yeah. Where are Pell and Igor and all this uh, and Chaka? Yo, non-existent, bro. This is why they should have just passed away, bro. <laughs> they should have been dead already. Yeah, they should have been passed away. They served no purpose throughout this story, bro. Like at all. Well, th- but then again, like they left, right? Like they were told to leave by Cobra. Well, they're told to look after Vivi. They clearly failed miserably. <laughs> Yeah, they're probably still looking for her. They probably don't know where she's at, right? Like, when they went to go look for her, they were like, yo, where's Vivi? And everybody was like, I don't know. <laughs> well, what, did, was, did Luchi, like, trick her? Like, oh, I'm here to protect you, and then, like, carried her off? Yeah, I don't know. Yo. Like, I think he just captured her. And she was like, yo, like, I knew. It. Like, you guys are not here for me. I don't know, man. There's There's so much going on in this chapter. I gotta sit down and think about this. Like I gotta, I gotta sit down and think about this for sure. It's just every every tidbit of information that happened in this chapter. Like even the bald Gorose, he didn't even take out a gun. He started pulling out his sword. Yo, so are we saying that uh, uh, Kinemon is stronger than the bald Gorose because he could cut fire, or no? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, agenda piece begins. Yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. Whenever I put the word agenda into the chapter, which apparently is happening a lot more, I'm like, oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> In this chapter, it's like, uh, let's discuss the other matches on the agenda. Yeah, listen, Oda's been killing it with the women. Yo, Khalifa almost brought this chapter to a 9.5, yo, for me. Batty, bro. She was looking right. No, she's. she's... And then Chapa Pala was in the chapter cool. too. You know what? I'm gonna bring it up to a 9.3, just because Chapa Pala was in it. But um, it's very interesting. I do want to point out something, and I don't know if you guys noticed this, but this is gonna go on like a theory thing. I know it. Do it. So you know how Zoans have the scarves around their necks. Mm. Why do you both think that Fukuboshi and his brothers have scarves around their neck? The same way that awakenings Yo, have it. Low key, no kidding. I was like, one of the Gorose looks like the tall one, <laughs> looks like Manboshi or whoever. Um, Do I have you think no there's idea. a connection? I have no idea. I, when we first got introduced to their design, I thought, oh, that it's just because they're under water, their scarves float. But now we're above water and they still float. So I, I have no idea. Do you think maybe awakenings resembled royalty? Back in the 800 year void, and then Fishman saw it as like royalty as well. And you know, okay, maybe if we were to get really out there, maybe the existence of races like Fishmen and Minks and Giants and Long Arms, etc., are like a compounded, like permanent like kind of devil fruit thing where people wished they were like this and then for years and years they just became races mm. so that's probably like friggin like wild cuckoo bananas <laughs> ancient lore feasts kind of talk but like we know that devil fruits change one's um lineage factor so maybe over generations before devil fruits were even a thing i mean w- we've all been making a grave misassumption in my opinion earlier in the chapter by assuming that whatever emu's powers have to be devil fruits for all we know his powers and the gorosei's powers could predate devil fruits i mean we know oda um at one point had magic as a uh, part of the series alongside devil fruits in romance dawn version 2 and he seems to have taken magic out to streamline it um and just focus on devil fruits because that's more you know feasible yeah. but for all we know like this is like some ancient eldritch like magics which um emu had and like the devil fruits are from the cl- d clan and they're unrelated for all you know i i like I, I don't know there, there's so much up in the air with like when it comes to scarfs and powers and stuff like that i, I i'm just gonna let oda cook yo <laughs> i have two stupid point outs <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right Yo, what's that bird at the end of season one of Pokemon that Ash saw? Ho-ho. Oh, ho-ho. Ho-ho? Doesn't, doesn't the girl oh, say oh. look like ho-ho? 
<laughs> that one <laughs> gross, I remember? Oh, that, Saba's gonna wake people? up in a coma. <laughs> so this Bro. all might be coma related, okay? Two, um, what's very interesting about the Gorosei that I'm starting to notice is that they very much resemble Zenbo from Kanjiro's uh, ability when he passed away. He made the Kanzenbo. Oh. Yeah, this yeah. looks exactly like that and like it's funny enough that i was pointing out to the guys on the podcast when kanzambo uh Kazembo first appeared he kept living after the user was over right like he passed away mm. and i was saying like that person well Kazembo actually became a sentient being of like it had controlled will because it just followed the will of kanjiro but ultimately it chose to do so and it talked as well and nobody could really hit it this looks and feels sort of like some Kazembo happening, unless it's like silhouetted for sure. But it looks the same. It has the same eyes. It has all that, bro. It's just I not actually on fire. like the stuff which Oda leaves unexplained. Like this, the Klobautermon. Like we, we've got legends and stuff in the One Piece universe. And maybe it's good that we don't know quite everything, like the inner workings of Haki and stuff. Like, Maybe that is a good thing, but who knows? Maybe Oda's still cooking and we'll find out. Oh my god. Um, oh, I, I yeah. do have one last thing to say. Um, part of me was wondering whether or not the um, person who um, saw Imu and ran away with Vivi and that, that role might have fallen into a different character instead of Waffle. Part of me was wondering if it was going to be steady um sabo's brother because he's the one who has the moment at reverie um he gets shown the empty throne and has to kneel before it and he's like i want to sit there and i when i was re when i was um working on this chapter i was like you know it would make a lot of sense if that's i like i knew it would be waffle because i've seen the future and the uh, morgan's office but it would make a lot of sense if it was steady because who else would be loitering around the empty throne the person who wants to sit on it and it would be really cool if he saw his brother and um, doing stuff and has to go on the run with him. I just thought it would be a cool character development thing. But I'm glad we have Wapple because Wapple has a good um, established background with Vivi and Cobra and all that. So, Listen, bro. If I could be Wapple with Vivi and my mouth, it's happening, bro. That's all I'm saying. Nice. What does that mean? <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right anyway 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 guys uh thank you so much for being here um before we go uh i want to thank everybody in the chat all 260 of you uh i know that there was juan carlos who became a member uh thank you so much uh he says sabo stronger than luffy no excuses it would be you right uh tea time says with the two dollars Glad the emu is Lily theories are all dead. I mean, it's probably still not. It's dead. Um, it's, it's dead. <laughs> it's dead. It's dead. It's dead. It's dead. Uh, Terrence Matthew says with the $2, you skipped over emu's line asking who's there. Oh, that's okay. She made up for it. And then we have Khalid Brown with the two. He says, place bets. Does emu have a fruit? Is he a creature? And we'll save that for another time. But overall, Probably guys. Another time. I just want to say thank you for joining me. Um, everybody, if you haven't, no, nah, you know what? Chestnut. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Chestnut, go ahead. Tell everybody where they can find you. I am on YouTube. I'm on TikTok. You can also find me on my Instagram. I post like some content there, uh, but I also just post like pictures of myself that I think look good. Uh, Larry, you can agree, right? No comment. <laughs> I, I haven't seen you as a brother. I'm sure they look awesome. Cool you're my brother. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to subscribe now and I'm going to say they look awesome. Wait. <laughs> I, I appreciate, I appreciate. But yeah, More guys, come support. follow me over there. I'm going to I'm gonna be making some content probably on, on, on the TikToks, posting them onto the YouTube shorts as well. I'm always on that grind. Uh, so yeah, come, come show your support or show your disagreement. I would love to, but there's going to be a lot of Lily uh, D-Clan Joy Boy stuff. I'm validated right now. Yes. I can't wait to see what you're cooking. Listen, chat. Uh, can we get a lot of W's for Chestnut, please? Can we throw a W Chestnut in the chat? Please, please, please throw uh -huh. some W Chestnuts in the chat. Let's show her some love. And then we have uh, Fiso.
from TCB. Uh, um, I want to say thank you in particular, my boy, for being here. It was great. It was a long time coming. Sorry it didn't happen earlier, but uh, let everybody no know worries. about you and, and what TCB has going on going forward. Um, thanks. Um, well, I, I'm i on... I'm on YouTube too, but I don't post. Mega Fiso. Um, I'm on Twitter, same handle. Um, TCB, we're constantly grinding out these chapters. We do other series. Um, I also um, do One Pace. Um, if you guys want, you can check it out. It's a great um, edit which um, tries to remove um, anime filler um, from the anime and make, make cut it more to the manga without ruining the music and flow of the animation. Um, we've been going strong for 10 years. And yeah. Just love One Piece, love talking about it, and you guys have been awesome. So thank you so much for having me, and I hope the audience has um, tolerated me, and I hope I added to the stream. So yeah, I've had a lot of fun. Thank you. Everybody, W's in the chat for FISO, bro. W in the chat for TCB as well for providing us with this chapter, which was excellent. Thank you so much to you guys. And I just want to say W's in the chat for the chat itself. Thank you guys for all being here. Thank you for listening to me, you know, Chestnut, and Fiso. I'll say it. I'll say it. L's in the chat for Larry. <laughs> L for Larry. I, I, I meant L for Larry, not, not like that. Yo, that's no, funny. No. W in the chat for Yo. Larry. <laughs> and and uh, you if you guys much. haven't joined our Discord, please join our Discord. Our Discord is super healthy. Uh, we do not allow any type of bullying and cursing's not allowed, really, and you know, it's very healthy in comparison to the others. So, and we have wonderful women uh, as mods in our Discord. Uh, Chestnut's a mod, and we have Hime as well. So, if you're a female, please don't worry about it. It's not full of just guys. Uh, but if you haven't liked the video already, please like the video. And I just want to say thank you. So they're actually doing the L's. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna throw L's. Bro. They <laughs> Sorry. So my name is Larry. I'm Chestnut. And I'm Fiso. And we'll talk to you guys later. Have a